mailbag time. Got some interesting things in here. I will be adding some more packages on as they arrive, so I've only got four things here right now. There will be more than this. So stick around. This will be done last, because it's the most exciting thing, I think. I'll give you links for things if I can, as usual. Oh, I dropped that on the floor, that's not good. Four oh one seven or MC one four oh one seven. Yeah. These are just uh, decade counters. Now I was working on a project recently and I realised I only had a couple of decade counters left. So I ordered some more from DigiKey and places like because I was doing some orders anyway. But I thought I'd get some from AliExpress too. Let's see if they appear to be real or not. That little basic chip tester here. I do have other chip testers I can chuck it in like I've got my Retro Chip Tester Pro. This is nice and quick and easy and it's right next to me. So turn it on, do it twice, 4017, great. It appears to be at least kind of real. I've actually been buying lots of parts recently, I've spent mm, way too much money, like about a thousand dollars on parts recently. Yeah, I might have got carried away. I also had to buy some more parts drawers and basically some of these older CMOS and TTL type parts they get me harder to find. I was kind of prompted by the fact I'm working on a project related to this thing over here, but not actually this thing over here. Working on a project which I've done, I've repaired it to my knowledge, I believe it's working correctly now. I've done a video about it which you'll see at some point. There are some chips in there and I found there's one chip which was really hard to find. Now when I actually did the video, I actually said in that video, if you know where to get this particular chip, let me know because I want to get some. And thankfully I, that chip wasn't actually the fault. It found, turned out to be something else, so that was good, but that particular chip, it's a 4000 series device. I only found it one place online as JCars, which is a local company. It's like, great, I'll buy from, from online, add into my cart on JCars website, get to the checkout, says, oh, they're not in stock. But they were in stock when I went to the webpage, so I guess it was a pick up only from certain stores. Though. But anyway, I happened to be in a JCars a couple of days ago, walking through the parts drawers, and I found those chips. I took all of their stock. <laughs> <laughs> so, yay, I found some. Um, let's hope I never actually have to use them because I've only got two. So, all I had was two. So, anyway, that's bizarre. Anyway, waffling, waffling, waffling. Let's get into this thing. Power delivery trigger boards. Let's open this one up. These are different. Decoy board. So this board here, I think it's plugged into a USB-C cable with a power delivery charger and then you can have these dip switches set to give different output voltages, right? so you're using this like a power supply. Yeah, I know little about it. There's a chip there which I can't see the numbers on. CHTT4K. It's got some markers on the back. Let's have a look at this one. Um. Maybe it's the same thing, maybe it's the same thing because it's just, yeah, set of dip switches. And that gives those outputs. Okay, it's exactly the same as these, just different different format factor. So that isn't exactly what I want. I'm, I've got some of these because I didn't have any. I thought they'd be useful. So HUSB 238 I may use them for something one day. I have nothing like this before. But what I actually really need is something which can output power delivery. I can have a 12 volt power supply and I can then tell that to negotiate a 12 volt power delivery over USB-C to a device. That's what I need. Now I've ordered some other parts which I think will be those. Um, I guess I'll find out. But it's not these ones. This box is pretty heavy. This is for another project. It's actually funny about this packaging and stuff. I actually wanted some of this a while ago. I didn't have any. And now I've got loads of it. It all just keeps on turning up. It's funny. So, we've got some transformers. We've got a toroidal. 220 volt in, 110 volts out at 50 VA. And these are also some other ones though. 220 volt in, 110 volt out. I'm not sure what the ratings were on those though. Another one the same, the same. So basically I've 
I keep getting devices which are 110 volt input. And sometimes you just need to convert this. I mean, I'm, I've got 240 volt supply here. And I found that 220 volt input is absolutely fine for a lot of these things. Because the, the losses in the transformer and that sort of stuff and the conversion losses, and it's, it's okay to actually be a little bit different. So these transformers I've got, I've got these two here which are the same. This one's a bit bigger and this one's bigger again. I don't remember the ratings offhand and what they were. Basically, I'm not quite sure which one will fit in the device I want to work on. So I've already done repairs on that device. So I want a transformer like this to step down from 240 volts down to 110 volts or thereabouts for a device I've been working on. Because it's a 110 volt device, the transformer cannot be modified and it's a multi-tap device. So I cannot just sort the transformer out easily. It'd be a real mission. Rewinding transformers isn't something I'm interested in even trying. I know it can be done. I really don't want to go there. I'd rather just get a second transformer, try and squeeze that into the case, have a secondary conversion goes from 240 down to 110 down to the original, you know. I've got different ones because I wasn't quite sure what was going to fit. This was hard to judge the size of. It's quite big. But sometimes you've got a slimmer profile where something will fit. You know, these will fit into a slimmer profile than these. You can see they've got separate windings, primary and secondary on separate windings. So that's good, They're nice and safe. They're not one round over the top of the other, which is something that gets done quite a bit on cheaper transformers, but these ones are okay. Obviously, toroidal was done that way, you know, so you know, hope that's okay, but you'd hope it is. So I looked up these transformers, that's 50 watts, that's 30, and those are both 20. Now, the device I'm powering, a 20 watt would actually work. 30 watt would be more comfortable to either double the rating. I'm not sure if that will fit though. One of these will do, I think. Yeah, I'd like to have a bigger margin than that. Right, let's finish recording mail and more arrived. Perfect timing. So like I said, I was gonna add some more on at the end. And sure enough, here we are. So, excellent. This is one of those things I was trying to find. 4553B, three digit BCD counter. So this is a new old stock kind of thing, ECG components. So what I actually wanted was an NC14553. That's what the original part was, but that's fine. These, as a B989, so I've got no idea what the NIS made. Now I've got another one. So I've got three of these devices now. Great. That probably means I'll never end up needing to use one. Now if you can guess where this one came from, put it down below in the comments. Now, like I said at the beginning, I've been buying a few parts recently. <laughs> 4081, this is a SOIC 14. 4025, it's an SOI 14. I think these are all going to be 14s or 16s. Some will be SOIC, some will be DIP. 4044, SOIC. 4015 SOIC, 4027 SOIC, uh, 4063 DIP, 4077 SOIC, 4028 SOIC. A lot of these th things are now in SOIC packages rather than DIP packages, so. I'm getting the SICs because at least then you can put them on a conversion board and you know adapt them down to a, a fit in the dip. So if you can't get a chip, at least you've got an SOIC version you could you know shoehorn in there. 4093 SOIC, 4021 SOIC, 4071 SOIC. A lot of these have got dip versions off. I've been sorting these out recently and, and stocking up on those. It's a 4069 dips, um, 4049 dip, 4033 dip, 4070 SOIC, 4020 SOIC, 4022 dip. Yeah, I've been buying 4000 series, guess. 4584 SOIC. 
I've got a bunch of those in dip anyway. I thought we'd get some SOIC ones. 4082 SOIC. 4051 SOICs. 4050 SOIC. See a trend here. 4030 SOIC. 4018 SOICs. 4052 SOIC. And these are capacitors. Capacitors, hey! 100 microfarad, 450 volts. Now, these are for a project. This one. That one right there. You'll see the video on that soon. Right, let's open this thing up and see what's in here. Well, I think I know what's in here. Well, I bought it, so I should kind of know. That. What are we going to find? It looks like a decent package. Look at this foam board. Look at that. That's decent. This is looking good. Okay, death one proved. Well done. Foam board right round. Bubble wrap right round. Yeah, it's good. Let's get this box out of the way. Yes, it's old. Somewhat larger than I envisaged it. But, that's all good. Now for the sake of fitting this thing in the frame, I'm going to lay on this side. So, what is this thing? Well, it's a decal inductor. Inductor! Big one! So you can do 1 Henry's, 100 milli Henry, 10 milli Henry, and 1 milli Henry. So those are the steps on this. Which is feel interesting. Oh, that feels really interesting. And that feels alright. That kind of has, but it feels more like it's slipping. Okay, this one's kind of got indents there. Doesn't feel good, it feels scrapey. The dials at least move. So it means you can do a decade from one mini Henry, or whatever the, the static inductance actually is, I do, they're not zero when they're connected up, they're, they're something else. So I can do 1 milli Henry up to 11.11 Henry's in that range. Maybe I'll hook up my LCR meter and just see what we get out of this and see if it seems to at least be working. But the fiddly switches, I think I need to do a video on this, pulling this thing apart and doing some work on it. This feels a little bit scratchy. LCR meter. No, it's not perfect, but it will do. Right, let's do set them all at zero. So at zero, uh, it's fluctuating a bit with noise and stuff. It's not perfect connections, and it's about 40 micro Henry sitting on there. Let's do that. It should be one. No. That's showing two. One isn't showing anything. Three is showing us two. Four is showing us five. 5 is showing us 5, 6 is showing us 6, 7 is 7, 8 is 8, 9 is 9, 10 is 10. So I think we've got some connection issues here. 4 is doing 5. Now it's 4, no, it's 5, 3. Yeah, these aren't great. So 10 mini Henry's here, that is 10. Doesn't really detent, but it's there. 30, 40, 50. I know you can't see the screen here, but that's fine, I suppose. I'm just checking the functionality quickly. Okay, that one's working, although it doesn't feel wonderful. 100 milli Henry, yep. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4. Doesn't feel nice. Feels a bit grating. But it is working. Yep, so it's, I think this bottom one here is the one that's had the most use. This is probably maybe it's a bit warm, I don't know, but anyway. So, Henry's. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Yep, okay. 
So all these three are working okay. This one feels the nicest. This one doesn't seem to be doing two is giving three, which is interesting. Three is giving two. That's definitely interesting. Four is four. Five is five. Six is six. Wasn't it four and five giving trouble before? Yeah. Pretty sure four and five go trouble before. That's five. That's still five. If I go that way, it's four. Okay, yeah. You've got some switch issues going on here, definitely. Let's just work it a little bit and see if anything happens. One is still doing three. Two is still doing three. Three is doing two. Four is doing five. Yeah, okay. So this one here, this one's going to need some work. Anyway, that's that. Something I'd really like to get is a poster for the 74 series Logic, or at least some of it, the common devices, the really common devices. Because so I've got a poster for some of the 4000 series stuff, which is convenient because it's like on hand, it's on the wall, you can quickly refer to it, and it covers a lot of the common stuff. I'd like to get one for the 74 series, but I wish I'd bought one years ago when they were available from Dick Smith's. Dick Smith's is long gone. Yes, it's a crappy old cable. Yeah, okay, I'll explain it. So this wire, I'll find the mile hangs. RG62AU. This is special cable. It's low capacitance, and I think it's rated at 92 ohms or something like that. Or 93 ohms, I can't remember exactly now. A bit harder to find. This cable is used on like the Syncor capacitance testers. I thought I'd get some of this cable, because I thought it'd be useful, you know? This is a decent amount there. So we've got B and C's on the ends, so if I need to make a cable up for something such as a sink or capacitor tester, I only need to uh, cut off the appropriate length, put some clips or something on the other end of it. Obviously with a nice restraint and stuff like that so it doesn't break the cabling, but these are looking old, a little bit dirty, but I think they'll clean up alright. They look like decent connectors, so I think they'll be fine. But uh, I don't know what it's used for originally. I don't know. RG62. Anyone got a clue what that's used for? It's a weird impedance. 92 ohms, 93 ohms, something like that. Was. I think it's 92. But yeah, it's, it's just weird. I don't know why they have that. Maybe someone can fill it in the comments down below. That's the mailbag cover. That was a lot of stuff. A lot more than I expected it to be. So other links down below if you want to watch other stuff. Subscribe over here if you're not already subscribed. And the Patreon spawn link over there to help me buy things for mailbag and things like that to fix. Peace,